Welcome to our video on winter maintenance of small sites. Our goal is to create safe surfaces and reduce the negative impacts of snow and ice control. Winter maintenance professionals have a large influence on our lakes and rivers. Whether you are mowing, digging, applying de-icers, or shoveling snow, you change the surface of the earth. Anything not firmly attached to the landscape will move with the next rain or snow melt downhill. This might be cigarette butts, but could also be winter salt or sand. In order to protect our water, we need to look for new and better ways to do our work. Many maintenance activities influence our water quality. You have the perfect job and all of the power in the world to protect our lakes and rivers. Hi, my name is Jim Weber. I'm a land care supervisor at the University of Minnesota and welcome to our training video on snow removal for small spaces. One of the biggest challenges in snow removal is the removal of snow in small spaces. Areas like disability ramps, curb cuts, doorways and steps, usually because this work has to be done by hand. It is critical to the success of your program merely because it is so heavily traveled by pedestrians. Another challenge is that many people perform these tasks, from subcontractors to janitorial staff to the customers themselves or seasonal or part-time workers. The most important thing is that everybody have the proper training and the proper tools to do this work successfully. After viewing the material, you should have a good working knowledge of the following objectives. You will be able to identify the conditions for selecting either de-icers or sand for snow and ice control in small spaces. Always remove snow and ice mechanically by shoveling, scraping, sweeping before applying any de-icers or sand. Measure and apply de-icers and sand in the proper amounts and patterns using the tools provided. List at least three reasons about how over-application of de-icing materials affects infrastructure and the environment. Use proper body mechanics for the job and dress appropriately for the conditions. De-icer is a term that you're going to hear a lot of today. What is a de-icer? Well, it's simply a dry or liquid material that's used to melt snow and ice. Commonly we hear these called salt or chloride, but there are many different types of de-icers. The one you will choose will depend greatly on the conditions you're working in and what goal you're trying to achieve. Speaking of de-icer, most of our de-icers belong to the chloride family. You know the same last name. Chloride. Sodium chloride, magnesium chloride, or calcium chloride. The chlorides can be very dangerous to aquatic life. To protect our lakes and rivers, the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency has adopted the federal chronic chloride standard of 230 milligrams per liter. 230 milligrams per liter is about one teaspoon of salt mixed into five gallons of water. Can you use one teaspoon less of salt every day in your job? If so, you can protect five gallons of water from being permanently polluted. You have a lot of power to protect our lakes and rivers. If one teaspoon will protect five gallons of water, how much water will be protected if we use 50 pounds less? 10,000 gallons. Imagine having dinner with your family next March and telling them how you protected 10,000 gallons of fresh water this winter. Using 50 pounds less of salt will do that. As you can see, our freshwater systems are so sensitive to salts. Well, the icers are salts, and salts dissolve into the water, and uh, they become invisible. We can't see the salt after it's been dissolved. It goes into solution. And when it's raining, the rainy day like today, the uh, rain sweeps the salt from the parking lot and the, and the steps and the sidewalks down into the nearest storm drain. Well, the storm drain is connected to a series of underground pipes, and these pipes funnel the water to the nearest water body, which could be a river or a lake or a pond. There is no water treatment plant at the end of this storm drain. Uh, it goes strictly to a water body. Well, everything that we do on land, whether it be on a parking lot or uh, another hard surface, definitely impacts water quality in those water bodies. And you can see here, we've got sand that's been applied uh, that is collected here and it's going to end up in the storm drain and it will go to the Mississippi River. The Minnesota Pollution Control Agency has a list of streams that have too much salt or chloride in them. 
The first creek to be put on this list was Shingle Creek. Shingle Creek's in Hennepin County, and it was determined that a 71% reduction in the amount of winter de-icer use is needed to protect the creek. What would you do if you were asked to use 71% less de-icer on your sidewalks this winter? Could you do it? What lakes, rivers, and wetlands are you near? And how much salt is in them? How you handle the outside space of your building will have a direct effect on the inside of the building. Too much de-icer or sand on the steps and it will be tracked inside, causing slippery and unsafe surfaces for the people using the building. This also causes expensive repairs and increased indoor maintenance costs to doorways, rugs, and flooring. De-icers harm plants and corrode metals. Everyone can see the brown grass along the sidewalk in the early spring, rust spots on our trucks and tools. Less de-icer is better for the concrete too. Now that everyone understands the problem, we're going to talk about the best practices for winter maintenance. Mechanical snow removal is our number one strategy. Shovel, plow, blow, scrape, or sweep, it doesn't matter, they're all great methods. A cleared surface allows us to use our de-icers in a much lower volume. What if you're in a hurry? Why not just throw some de-icer on top of the snowy steps? Bad idea. The de-icer doesn't have enough power to melt much. You will only create an icy or slushy situation, one that you'll have to go back and clean up another day. Always remove the snow first. Then, if necessary, use the de-icers to melt away the few remaining flakes. For small spaces, we have a variety of tools for snow and ice removal. Often our spaces don't lend themselves to motorized equipment. Choosing the correct tool will make the job much easier and more successful. Try using a broom to keep the snow cleared off your surfaces. For a heavier snow, use a shovel. Shovels come in many varieties, but the basic two are the push shovel and the scoop shovel. Scoop shovels have small sides. It helps keep the snow on the shovel. They're good for lifting and moving snow elsewhere. They're also good for working in small, tight quarters. The push shovel has no sides. They're good for guiding or sliding the snow on the ground to its destination. Generally, you can move more snow faster with a push type shovel. Choose the proper shovel and use the proper technique. When shoveling, it's important that you keep your body in line and that you keep your work in front of you. Shovel with your knees bent and turn to move your pile of snow. Working outdoors, select proper clothing for cold, wet, and windy conditions. Dress in layers to adjust for different working conditions. Wear a hat and gloves in addition to thermal underwear to help keep water away from your skin. When needed, take short indoor breaks to warm up. Early removal of snow reduces your chance of an icy compacted surface. If we are late at snow removal and people have walked over our surfaces, we will likely get compacted surfaces. This means more work to mechanically remove the snow and more chemicals to get our surfaces cleaned. If you're always battling compacted snow, reassess your maintenance strategy. Number one, start mechanical removal early. Number two, work it all through the storm. Remember, mechanical removal is your first defense. Removing compacted snow from surfaces is a problem. In Minnesota, through most of the winter, it is warmer when it snows, but temperatures soon drop after the storm. If we're dealing with compaction, we're often in this colder temperature range. De-icers do not work well in extreme cold temperatures. Using more de-icer when it is cold is not the answer. There are two tools for scraping, the ice chisel and the ice scraper. The ice scraper has a wider, flexible blade. It cannot pound through the ice, but it works great like a putty knife under the ice. The ice chisel is more rigid. It can be used to break through the ice or scrape the ice. Be careful when using chisels to not damage the sidewalk and steps. After we remove the snow, we may want to improve traction because there's some snow left on the concrete. What should we apply? For very cold, below zero winter days, use sand. At super cold temperatures, your de-icers will not work. Sand will give you traction on top of the snow or ice, 
but it will never melt anything. Once the sand has moved onto bare pavement, it's time to sweep it up. It will never provide traction again. It will only add to a slippery walking situation and track into the building. Sweep it up. You can put it in a dumpster or reapply it to an area of compaction. Choose your de-icer based on pavement temperatures. Air temperatures and pavement temperatures are different. On average winter days, de-icers work fine to melt the snow and ice. There are a variety of de-icers available. Sodium chloride or rock salt is effective down to about 15 degrees pavement temperature. Magnesium or calcium chloride work at colder pavement temperatures. If you're using a blended de-icer, you will have to do the research to determine its practical melting range. In general, de-icers do not work below zero temperatures. If purchasing or applying de-icers, take time to understand the practical melting range and do not apply at pavement temperatures colder than recommended. If it's a warm day and the sidewalk or steps look wet, you don't need de-icers. The sun is doing the melting, use nothing. To keep de-icers fresh and spreadable, store them in a tightly covered container. Many of our de-icers attract moisture to themselves and turn into a solid lump if we keep them uncovered. For most of our winter days, the pavement temperatures are warm enough for de-icers to work. If we have shoveled the snow, and a small amount of de-icer will melt the remaining flakes. If you have applied too much de-icer or spilled some, take a minute and sweep it up. Reapply it to a different slippery area. Don't leave it on the concrete. If you leave extra salt on the concrete, you now have a new slippery situation, not to mention harming the water and nearby vegetation. Well, when I was a baby, my dad used to take us out on the boat, and I was about two when I learned how to fish. The lakes and rivers are very important, more important than iPods and Facebook, because on a summer day, you don't want to really sit inside. You want to go out to the lake and the beach and have fun. And I'd like it to be around for a lot longer, too. I want my kids to have the same experiences at the lake as I did, because you have a great time there. So, how much de-icer should you use? If your organization has an application rate chart that guides you in this decision, then you should use it. There are application rate charts available on the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency website. It's in the parking lot and sidewalk manual. If you have no charts, here's a simple way to look at it. Four pounds of de-icer or less per 1,000 square feet. Here's an example of 3.3 pounds spread over 1,000 square feet. How do you measure a pound of de-icer without a scale? Well, here's a trick. One heaping coffee mug holds about one pound of de-icer. If you don't use a coffee mug, take your scoop, fill it up, and weigh it. See how many pounds of de-icer that holds. Write it on the scoop so you don't forget. Our goal is four pounds or less of de-icer per 1,000 square feet. We recommend you get in the habit of estimating the size of the area you are planning to treat so you can use the proper amount of de-icer. Square feet is simply length times width. You could pace it off, measure it, or with experience, even eyeball it. For example, an average parking space is about 150 square feet. This would need a little more than a half a pound of de-icer or about a half a coffee cup full. Another example is a curb cut. This is generally about 60 square feet. That would require about a quarter of a pound or a quarter of a coffee cup. If you don't know your square feet and you don't know how much your de-icer weighs, concentrate on recreating the spread pattern. Notice no overlapping granules or mini piles of de-icer. The granules are no more than three inches apart, but they're not dense. There's space between all of them. This is a spread pattern of about 3.3 pounds per thousand square feet. You would rarely need de-icer spread more densely than this. Remember what the spread pattern looks like? Then you will be able to recreate it on your own surfaces. If you're not sure, error on using less. You can always reapply if necessary. The application rate you see behind me was done using a half a pound of material over 150 square feet. It was applied evenly by using a hand spreader. If you were to try and do this using, say, a cup or a scoop, it's very difficult to get this sort of even application. Here I have the same half pound of material that we applied over the 150 square feet pattern you saw earlier. If you don't have a spreader available to you, you can make an effort to apply it evenly.
Now you'll notice that I, I applied it fairly evenly, but I wasn't able to apply it over the entire area. If you have the ability to use a piece of equipment that will allow you to spread your product evenly, it will avoid you a lot of extra material and make your work a lot easier. As you can see, spreaders work great for most de-icers, especially if you keep the de-icers covered and the moisture out of them. If you use rock salt, the crystals are too large for a hand spreader and you'll have to use a scoop. Unfortunately, scoops lend themselves to over-application of material. When you purchase your spreaders, look for sturdy ones that actually can distribute the de-icer and break through a few clumps. Also put one right at the building entrance, right next to that bin of de-icer, so that the person doing the steps will be more likely to use it instead of the scoop method. If you want to help your crew, take the time to figure out the square feet of your entrances. Measure them out and draw a line on your spreader. This is how much you need. You are very important in noticing problems in your maintenance area. There are a variety of problems. The dip in the sidewalk that collects water and freezes every night. Water that drips from the roof and refreezes on your steps. These are hazard areas for much public safety. You can't fix them no matter how much de-icer you use. Report them to your supervisor. You are the key person in making others aware of the problem. In review, our first and best tool is to physically remove the snow and ice. Don't apply de-icer during the storm. Use the proper snow removal tool and the proper technique. Only apply de-icers to cleared surfaces and only with the proper spread pattern. If it's too cold, if it's one of those super cold days where the de-icers won't work, go to sand. If it's a very warm day where it's already melting, don't apply anything at all. If there's excess material sitting on the concrete, clean it up. You have a very important job. You have the key job in creating safe winter surfaces and protecting our lakes and rivers. Together, all of us can make a huge difference. This ends our time together. We hope the video has given you maintenance tips and new reasons to be even more effective in your winter maintenance job. Have a great winter. Through improved mechanical strategies and a reduction in salt use, we've uh, cut costs, saved money. Maintenance professionals can really reduce impacts on the environment while keeping safe surfaces. Uh, we can make a big difference with the environment. For more information about winter maintenance practices for sidewalks, parking lots, or roads, the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency has maintenance manuals on their website for you to print. The video that you see today is also on this website. The website is www.pca.state.mn.us slash programs slash roadsalt.html.